<laughs> all right, all right, it's official. I covered the floor in plywood, I pulled the weld in, and started disassembling it. It's time to put a turbine in it, so we're going to start with the fuel tank. I've just undone this bearing, and uh, when I get the turbine, it's going to be able to climb pretty well straight up. So the way we're going to take care of this is I need to make sure I don't port the fuel. So this shape here is going to be like a header tank for the left wing and another one for the right. Fuel pickup will be here at the bottom, and then it won't matter what attitude I get in, I will not be able to port that. I can tip it at any angle. This tank will be filled from that tank, so this will always be completely full. So I want to worry about getting kind of wild in the turns and landings, but that's the idea. I'm going to start with two fuel tanks. All right, I'm working on the Wilga fuel tank, and uh, I just finished the part. <laughs> it is the weirdest looking part I think I've ever made. Um, it's feather light, crazy light. It should be, it's carbon fiber, but uh, it's got a lot of funny shape to it, a lot of character. Lots of little lumps and bumps, um, if you can see that as I rotate it. It looks like it's a little bit of a hack job, but it's actually not, it's perfect fit. And all these little bumps and characters you see are all these bumps lines, nuts, the brake line loop. Um, they're all those parts. This big bump right here is the fuel probe, sits behind it and runs all the way down the gear leg. This part goes here. And that's it. <laughs> Two sides of my gas tank. And uh, we got the other part that goes on it, the probe down the middle, the pickup at the bottom. <laughs> I'm super excited. That is one of the funniest parts I've ever made, but it's light, it's perfect, and it's done. So let's get back to work. This is the other two sides of the tank fitting. This will air vent back up to above the wing. This is the fuel line that will come in and feed the fuel tank. Once the wing runs out, there'll be this fuel probe in the gear leg, and I've machined this adapter. I've machined a whole bunch of adapters. This will fit inside that hole right there there this probe will come in and sit here then i've got a fuel probe that goes in my gear leg right down to the bottom of this funnel so there'll be no way for me to port fuel this will actually be bonded back up like that and i'll be able to get pretty radical on anything i need wherever my fuel's at i'll i'll be in good shape so halfway done let's get torque So I don't think I've ever bought this many little tables at Costco, but uh, we're starting the Wilga project and it, <laughs> the Wilga is a big plane. So I'm gonna set up like 10 tables, cover it with plywood, screw it down so that I bring the floor up about <laughs> three feet higher so I can actually work on it. So I'm excited. We're tearing the whole plane apart, pulling the motor, gonna change the wing and lengthen the wing, lengthen the core of the wing, basically build a new wing, put in a turbine, so uh, this will help me get up high enough in the air to actually do this project. So hopefully it works, but why not? Costco has airplane parts. <laughs> um, I got all the tables in from Costco. We're gonna build wood platforms on it. Um, I gotta lift the wheel up. I need to get it exactly flight attitude. So I marked in the aircraft where flight attitude was uh, by going out and flying it. So I've got that set for cruise flight attitude. So I've got to get this lift over. Line the beam up with the gears. steel pipe I've inserted here. I can't have the plane sitting on the rubber. So next thing I'm going to do is build a triangulated platform that holds this steel pipe and holds the wheel good about two inches off the ground. And then I can level the whole plane, the wings, the flight attitude, 
and that'll give me a good baseline so I can build my motor mount and front ends. So today is the day, the last day it flies until it's a turbine. So I'm way excited. Probably should have safety goggles, but <laughs> it was a framework for years, we never did. like an upside down picnic table that wouldn't balance but uh, this is going to be holding up the front of the wheel again. We're done. <laughs> it's a good day. So I got this kettlebell on here. Keep my cables tight so they roll up nice. And uh, I'm going to pick the wheel guy. All right, let's do the other side. ground. I'm going to roll the plane around, center it up, square it to my seam lines on the floor, get it perfect, and we'll be done. All right, so I've got the platform squared up so that I can true up the tail, the engine, the airframe. The plane's got to come this way, so we'll see if I can drag the whole plane over, get a little more. whole plane rolls, so Oh, me a little more. Too far one way, too far another. Ah, now it's coming towards me. Okay. I think I've got it close. Looks like the tail's got to move over. Okay. Looks like we're about there. Wilk well, is down. We're ready to go. <laughs> I'm excited. All right. Let's put the beam away. Next time we use the beam, we're picking this up. Putting the Pratt Whitney on. Actually, I take it back. Next time we use the beam, we're taking that engine off, which I hope is really soon. Okay, um, almost done with my gear tanks. Uh, remade both the front and the back section of the fairings. Uh, this one I've got all ready to mold in some new lighting from Low Press D. I'm excited about that. Uh, but I've got the structure in. I had to rebuild all of this. This is now all fuel right here. I'm getting ready to do some body work on it and uh, wrap it up. But it's mounted, the lines, the venting, the pickup, the sensors, all done in here now. So I've got my fuel tanks done on both sides, uh, other than body work. Um, front done. And uh, we're well into this project. It's only been a few days, so I'm super excited how much we've got done. It's been very, very long days or nights, or they roll right through each other. I don't know which, but uh, we've come a long way. It's going fast. And uh, the further I get into this project, the more excited I am. It's, it's always more work than you think, and it's kind of daunting, but I love it. So we're getting close, 
We're about there um, on at least the fuel tanks, and then we'll start diving into some of the rest of the plane. I'm okay at it, and I'm probably exaggerating. I need, Reggie, where are you? <laughs> Reggie's the guy who usually helps me do this. He's in California, couldn't make it, so I might have to kill him later. Back to work. <laughs> <laughs> Hello! <laughs> Goodbye! Alright, we just got the last layer of carbon. Now I gotta put on a peel ply, and uh, oh, we got a long day today. <laughs> All right, I just got the peel ply on. Um, this is our last layer of carbon. Um, I did a little trick I learned a while ago, and it works really well. There was a couple of little low spots from where we bonded in the lid of the, the tank to close out this fuel tank. And uh, I used to put the carbon over that to, to cover up the seam of that joint of that lid. And then I used to do micro body filler to kind of fill those imperfections and sand on top of that. But that's a two-step process and also puts the micro on the outside of the carbon. So where I already had carbon, carbon base and I sealed it in, what I actually do is I, I, fill, I fill the hole with micro and it only takes a teeny bit of skim in that trough where the bonding was done with micro and while it's still wet I put the carbon on top of it and then if you take your spreader and you lay it this way you can actually blend that micro flat underneath the carbon fiber and uh, it's just a little trick but what that does it puts the micro under the carbon between two layers of carbon and has less chance of break or a crack later 10 20 years down the road but it also does it in one step it saves me a lot of body work later to have it done. So anyway, I'm pretty happy about it. I gotta go do the other tank, flip it over to the other side, but I'm doing the body work, the primary body work, not the fine tune, but all the primary imperfections, repair and last layer of closeout carbon at the same time. So hope that helps. Don't know if any of you have tried it, but it works awesome. <laughs>